Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we are going to have a look at the history and the architecture of Connell in our guide. The village of Connell really started to grow because of the Connell Ferry in the 1600s. And in the 1800s, it really became a playground for the Victorians. Unfortunately, those in the 1600s, and especially the Victorians, wiped out most of the old history of this place. There are very faint traces of burial cairns and forts, and they have found archaeological evidence of Neolithic living, but it is very limited and it is very, very hard to see. Connell is derived from the Gaelic for rough water. Now it's called the Falls of Laura, but yes, I agree, rough water. The sea drops below the level of Loch Edith as the tide goes out. Sea water from the loch forces its way through the narrows over the rocky shelf often a spectacular rapid forms. Due to the narrowing, the tide rises more quickly than it can get back into the lock, which obviously causes all this stunning turbulence today. Just to the left of the falls, we have a little island, which as soon as the sun shines, it's covered in seals. The sun is shining, but it is freezing today. So we have the Ben Crookin range there and Star Ave just to the left of it. And there are the stunning falls. And on the other side of the bridge, you can see Mull and Ben Moor. Connell Bridge was completed on the 9th of May, 1903. At the time, it was the longest cantilever bridge in Europe, except for the fourth bridge. It has a 500 foot span and rises 50 feet above the water, which as you can see, is a wee bit angry today. It was constructed using over two and a half thousand tonnes of steel, and it cost £43,000 at the time to build. It is pretty much as it was built. There have been a few struts at either end have been heightened a wee bit after high-sided vehicles were bopping them on the way past. It was built to carry the Balahulish branch of the Calendar Oban Railway. The waiting hut at uh, Connell Station kind of hides how busy this place would have been when the railway was first built. In fact, extra tracks and a turntable were fitted in order to carry all the goods that were heading up and down this line. When first constructed, cars could travel over the bridge, but they would have to go under a railway wagon. In 1914, the bridge was converted in order to allow both rail and car travel. This would be the way the bridge would run until the line shut. In 1940, the sidings were converted in order to assist the war effort. After the war, all the sidings were removed. The Calendar route ceased in 1965, with the Balahulish route closing a year later. The bridge would then become fully functional both directions for vehicles. Clearly by 1866 the population of Connell was starting to grow because this is when the little school was built. Yep, it's another commanding view. Currently with scaffolding around it to do a wee bit of running repairs. The Falls of Laura Hotel was built in 1886, 
to fuel the Victorian need for their Highland holidays. Today it boasts a whiskey bar with over 100 different whiskies. If that's your thing, it sounds like quite a long night. St Oran's Church was built in 1888. Previously the congregation had been using the waiting room that was still there at the station and an old sky hall. It is a stunning church. It has been built in the image of Iona Abbey. The building is made of granite and the church is known for its stunning stained glass windows. Obviously we can't get in today, but we'll be back. It's just round the corner. Before we do leave the church, I'm going to go down to the sundial for an Alexander Crab and tell you a wee bit about him. I like my commanding views, as you know, this is quite a commanding view this place. And look, there's the sundial. So the sundial was erected by Ellen Wood, the sister of Edward Alexander Crabb. He was the son of Charles Crabb and lived here in the village. In 1912, he enrolled in the second Scottish horse, which was the territorial branch. And in World War I, he was a sapper for the Royal Engineers. He is recorded as sailing to Bombay in 1921. He is listed as a banker and his home address is Aberdeen. Went back to Bombay in 1927. He was registered as working in the Bombay Imperial Bank. He died in Lahore at 32 years old. The temperature has improved a wee bit, so we'll risk the cardigan off, but we're not taking the scarf off yet. I'm going to tell you about the hanging knoll. Prior to the 17th century, this hillock would have had gallows on it. McDougall's and then laterally Campbell's would have made life and death decisions in this area. The last person to be hung on the knoll was Colac Hoytick left-handed collar. He was a minor chief of the clan Macdonald. His son had been instrumental in a massacring of the Campbells just at the beginning of Charles I's reign. When Charles I was executed and dethroned, Macaulay fled to Ireland. His father Colla wasn't so lucky. He was captured and imprisoned in Dunstaffnage Castle. He clearly had a sense of humour because he requested to be buried beside his jailer so that they could exchange snuff and chat about the past. His remains would have been buried near the gallows, possibly very close to that rowan tree we see. It was considered that a rowan tree would ward off evil spirits um, and usually those that were executed or planted quite close to their own tree. It truly is hard to kill the old traditions. I have just met two ladies, probably twice my age, out gathering seaweed. They're going to fertilise their potatoes for this year using the seaweed. Apparently the wet stuff is the best. As you can imagine, I'm going to spend a wee bit more time out in this glorious sunshine. But that was a short foray into Connell. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like 
and leave me a message, it really helps the channel. If you want to catch me out in my next adventure, hit subscribe and please share the video if you find it useful. Thank you for watching.